Hey, what's up everybody? It's November. I'm on the East Coast. Beautiful day. Uh, <clears throat> what we're looking at here is the Yardmax YB5765 um, snowblower. And uh, I debated and hesitated for many years um, and battled through several feet of snow a couple of years there. Um, probably waited far too long. I think it was about time to bite the bullet. Um, get a snow blower up here. I just need something to kind of help out, um, take some pressure off, and uh, maybe cut some time off the snow removal up here. I went with this Yard Max uh, YB5765 from Home Depot and uh, had it delivered. And uh, this is going to be a opening instruction review. Uh, I'm going to try and get it all put together. Um, as far as the delivery, I'm not going to blame anyone, but this is how it arrived. Um, this was, again, through HomeDepot.com. Yeah, I know it's heavy, folks. Uh, you know, I, I personally wouldn't want to be deadlifting it. Uh, I don't think I could even at this point. You know, but... What are you gonna do? I mean, package supposed to be delivered and supposed to arrive the way you, you know, purchased it, new and uh, I guess unblemished. So we'll see what kind of surprises I might have awaiting me in the box. Um, you know, Halloween just passed, so I, I hope I'm not in for a scare. And uh, I'll cut her open, the box that is, and. Uh, Start peeking inside and see what we got. All right, so let's see what it looks like in here. Okay, not too bad. We we'll remove some of this packing. All right. Yeah, let's see. Things definitely shifted around. And uh, packing material is completely broken up here, which means it shifted quite a bit. There's an axle, looks like, sticking out there. So I'm hoping that wasn't damaged. We got pieces poking through the bottom corner of the box here. Hoping none of these were bent or damaged. We'll see how the installation goes. Only time will tell. Uh, looking for the kit. And that looks like it's this, so I'll remove that. I'm gonna put that aside on the floor here. Looks like it comes with some engine oil, which is good. Again, packing material. This looks like this chute. Now, I did pick this brand because it's a metal chute. I like that idea. Might be in decent shape considering the condition of the box. Let's set that aside. I guess I'll just keep removing the loose stuff. This is stuck here. Yeah, this is this is all jammed in here from shifting, I guess, during the uh, shipment process. You can see the axle is on top of these pieces here now this has got a spiral end on it it's supposed to spiral in I already pre-looked at the instructions and this thing is sticking right out the bottom corner of the box so I'd be really surprised if this isn't damaged I'm gonna need I'm gonna need uh, my other hand to kind of shimmy some stuff out of the way in order to actually even unpack uh, the equipment I'll be right back it looks like the end of it is, is pierced through the bag, but it doesn't look damaged. So I'll get back to it and we'll try and get the main main part of the snow blow. It doesn't look like there's too much to do. And through checking the instructions, the assembly instructions in advance, confirm that. But I'm going to go through it with you today. We'll see how it felt goes. felt like uh, probably the easiest way to get this out of the box. I didn't want to rip the box. Uh, I want to keep the box in... Uh, its current condition and I felt like tilting it uh, towards the engine 
Uh, obviously, you're thinking that's the heaviest part, which it is. Um, and sliding it out carefully on the styrofoam packing. Uh, that, that's the key, and that's the ticket. I'll remove the rest of the box, tilt it, uh, and orient it properly, and we'll get back to it. I got all the packing material removed. They did actually have a brace in the front here of the auger, and uh, you know this is what we're left with. We got a tire to deal with on that side, um, and a couple of parts over here. I'll open up the pack uh, with the instructions, and we'll get to that instruction pack. Gonna uh, open it up here. It's like it comes with a couple of tools. Registration. And emissions. There's the engine manual. You want to hold on to that always. Any issues with the engine, you're going to look at that. But here's, uh, here's the instruction manual. I read through this uh, again in advance, so I'm not just flipping through. I read through every word of it. Um, that's just how I do. And these are all uh, guidelines, inspect your machine first, safety, safety rules, content supplied. I'm going to check that now. You should always double check what they say should be supplied is supplied so you don't get halfway through the installation and run into some problem. Uh, and then I'll go with the assembly. Be Looking right back. The parts list. Um, it looks like, at first glance, uh, we have everything. A couple of handles, um, chute clean-out tool, shift lever, handlebars, control panel. Actually, don't see the control panel. Oh, yeah, okay. They're calling that piece the control panel. I guess if we flip it over, it should have some sort of, yep, there we go. All right, so I think we got everything. That looks like the uh, nuts and bolts, the sorted items in there, which it does say should be in a kit on here. And uh, I even, I did see the skid shoes. So I think we're good to go. We'll start with the instructions. First step, I'm going to remove the wing nut washer from the air filter cover. Rotate the air filter cover by 180 degrees so that the primer faces outside. And install the air filter cover and tighten the wing nut. I'm going to do that now. First step says turn this 180 degrees. Uh, it shows an air filter in the instructions. There's an air cleaner in the instructions. but. You look under here and there's nothing, so run the thing the way it is. So I'll get back into uh, the instructions. We just basically did this part, this step. As you can see, very clear, there is an air cleaner in the instructions, but none on the, uh, none on the snowblower. So I'll have to do some further investigation into that call it manufacturer myself next step supposedly these handlebars uh, I'm gonna go ahead and do this step now uh, first step is saying to remove the axle pin from the axle so uh, I'll go ahead and find that remove it and then we'll uh, well actually uh, let's see yeah we got to remove the other wheel from the axle and loosen two bolts on the sides of the transmission housing. Let me show those uh, in this step here. Two bolts there, I guess. I'll take a look and get back with you. I'm going to first remove all the rest of the plastic that's left on here from the shipping. I don't know what, how much help the plastic makes, but that's the way it arrived. Got 
done a lot of shipping myself actually and this is probably the worst job I've ever seen for an item of this cost to be shipped to someone, a customer. I think I found the bolts they're talking about that they want you to loosen on the transmission housing. Well, I actually had to find, I actually had one of these. This one I loosened already from there. This one came on it. This one was missing. So I had to supply this myself. I do want to continue with it, which I do at this point. We're already into the winter. I guess you just lift and pull this pin out in order to get this wheel off. I'm going to need two hands. I'm going to lift the snow blower from uh, the the transmission housing here and uh, gently set it down and we'll continue. So these are only supposed to be loosened. I put them back in, loosen, and then it says the handle with the chute crank sticker should be installed on the left side. It says right there. And uh, this one here has got the chute crank sticker. So this will go here. And uh, I'll get the other bolt. It calls for this one, M10X40 times two. Those will actually go through the top part of the uh, handles. Let me try and find that, get that over in the right spot, and figure this out before I show you on video. Crank sticker is actually this one here. That's the shoot crank sticker. And that goes on the left, and that does work because of the shape of the uh, handlebar. This one will work in this spot. So I got it in place and hand tightened, and uh, line the holes, blah blah blah. Insert the bolts, curved washer. You have to make sure the curved washer is in the right spot. It goes on the outside. You can see it there. There. And then uh, looks like we're gonna do both of them, even though it doesn't really say it. Finger tighten the bolt on that. Yeah, so I'm gonna do the uh, the right side as well, and then we'll move on to this part, the wheels. This will be the right side handlebar. curved washer and then all right should look something like this curved washer installed there on the outside the bolt top bolt bottom uh, transmission housing bolt everything finger tight at this point bolts. next step is uh you're gonna want to ratchet those tight go from the top to the bottom I think it gives a torque spec for the tightness. Uh, so I'm going to tighten it until it's pretty tight, but I'm not uh, going to strip it. It shows a 16 millimeter. So uh, 16 millimeter or 5 eighths. Looks like. This is, uh, remove this pin from the hub or the axle. And it says install the tire and the tire on. You're gonna need two hands. Put the tire on, I'll show you the next time. 